If you want to get the most out of your gaming PC in 2020, then awesome, you're in the right place. Back by popular demand, this video is going to show you 10 advanced, yet still very simple, tips and tricks to fully unlock your gaming PC's potential. We're talking about things like better FPS, a smoother experience, maybe some graphical fidelity upgrades, some PC mods, and my personal favourite, actually having a quieter PC. So let's jump into it after a quick word from this video's sponsor. Asus and the ROG Theta. This is a gaming headset unlike any other with true 7.1 surround sound for precise audio placement that really will let you achieve that game-winning play. ROG's home theatre-grade DAC and Essence drivers deliver exceptional audio quality, with sublime clarity and thunderous bass. It's comfortable, surprisingly lightweight, and it works across all of your devices thanks to USB Type-A and Type-C connectivity. Check it out with the link down below. Let's begin by making your computer that little bit quieter, as this one is dead simple. Most gaming PCs are just way louder than they need to be, and tuning your fans can actually be done in just a couple of clicks. Simply find your motherboard on the manufacturer's website, and then download the software suite that manages the fan speed. If you're rocking an MSI board for instance, then you'd be looking for the command manager, whereas this ASUS board uses AI Suite. It's then just a case of finding the automatic fan tuning button, hitting it, and then letting your PC find the right balance between acoustics and cooling. And of course, you can do a couple more tweaks if you do want to fine tune it to get it exactly how you want. If your fans aren't showing up in the software, then chances are they might not actually be plugged into the motherboard headers directly. So popping off your PC side panel and having a quick check for yourself is probably a good course of action. It's definitely worth noting though that your mileage will vary a little bit depending on the fans that you have in your case right now, as if you've just got the ones that came with your enclosure, chances are they might not be that great, you might not be able to control them as well as you'd like, so upgrading to something that's going to run a little bit quieter but has more control and in a lot of cases is going to perform better may well be a good upgrade for you. So I leave some of my favourites down in that description below for you. But what about if you're wanting to eke more frames out of your games though? Well, first you're going to actually need to know what frame rate you're currently running at. And for years the way to do this was to download an application called Fraps, but these days there's a new king in town. It's made by Nvidia and it's simply called FrameView. But don't worry though, it also works on AMD's graphics cards and downloading it is completely free. Select a benchmarking time period and then open up your game. Now go for a little wander about in a very memorable location so that you can repeat this later and you'll see your live frame rate displayed on screen. And this in itself is great, but it's when you hit that scroll lock key that the magic happens and it lets us accurately record our average frame rate. And this is what we're going to use to see if we can get any improvements from our hardware upgrades or any software tweaks. So now that we have our baseline and something to sort of compare a before and after, it's time to make some changes to our system by what we're calling overclocking. And this lets us essentially change a few of the settings in the PC to let it run a little bit faster for free. This is where the usual overclocking disclaimer applies to all of these next steps. So following them may void your warranty, cause your PC to crash, or even potentially damage some hardware. So if you do any of these steps, or if you ever do any overclocking, please be aware that you're doing so at your own risk with your own equipment. The easiest tweak to make is to actually overclock our RAM. So it's time to head into the BIOS by restarting our computer, mashing that delete key, and then activating XMP on your memory. Because you see, you actually have to turn on baked in profiles to make fast RAM, well, fast. And it's not actually enabled by default. Just change the overclocking profile to XMP, and then save and exit. Most PCs at this stage will then happily reboot into Windows with a faster set of memory, but if you find your PC is a little bit unstable, maybe it stops booting, then you're likely going to need to clear the CMOS and then reset the RAM to its default speeds to actually continue to the next step. Now, next up is the graphics card and overclocking this, I don't know, most people don't talk about it even though the graphics card is usually the limiting factor for the vast majority of gaming PCs and quite a lot of them do have a little bit of headroom to make some changes and get more FPS in your games. Each graphics card has their own software suite for doing this with options including EVGA Precision, MSI Afterburner, here I'm using Zotex Firestorm and you can usually mix and match if you want, it's entirely up to you really. And then with a game open in borderless window mode, increase the power percentage value as well as 
the GPU and memory clock speeds, but make sure you do this very slowly and monitor the frame rate as you go. The higher you raise them, the more FPS you're going to get in game, but of course at the cost of higher temperatures, higher fan speeds and a little bit of instability. Each graphics card will have its own limit of exactly how far you can push it before some really quite weird and strange things start to happen, such as maybe artifacting from memory issues, crashing from GPU clocks, and then just random shutdowns that to be honest could be from any of the above. The fun bit is pushing it to the limit but without affecting your stability as a crash when you're I don't know, in the final circle of Apex Legends would be a disaster and you'd only have yourself to blame. But you might find that this doesn't really do anything. Maybe your graphics card is already overclocked as far as it will go from the manufacturer or maybe you're limited by the CPU, which is yes, where CPU overclocking comes in. Seems to get all of the headlines and is incredibly simple to do. Your motherboard BIOS can actually do this for you these days with automatic settings or you can try to do it yourself manually, the good old fashioned way. It's a little bit too long to go through in the detail that it deserves in this video though, so please do check out my complete overclocking guide with the link down below, or by hitting the card in the top right corner of this screen. It's really easy to follow, I promise. And breathe! That's all the overclocking done in this video. If you're someone that doesn't want to do it, I totally understand it. Truth be told, I didn't overclock my first gaming computer, I think for a good year, maybe a year or two, so it's okay. And there's plenty of other things that you can do to your system to get the most out of it. But really the most important thing is to actually understand what's going on under the hood. And if you do need to upgrade a component, what should you upgrade? Well, the answer is actually staring you right in the face. Simply open up your game of choice. Once again, setting it to borderless window mode. So it's running in the background exactly as it was when you were playing. And then hit control, shift and escape as this will bring up the task manager. And it's the performance tab that you need to look at because this gives you a really easy breakdown of every component in your system and then its usage. So if the GPU, for instance, is set near around about 100%, this is pretty normal for most gaming computers and it tells you that it's the graphics card that's your limiting factor. But if you find that maybe your CPU or your RAM is close to 100%, then you know that it's that that's causing you the problem and so on. But yes, Marcus, enough now. You've been talking about technical stuff overclocking for the whole video. I came here for some gaming information, come on. I want to play The Witcher 3, I want to play XCOM, I want to play Civilization, and I want to be able to get more out of it. I don't care about FPS, I'm already maxed out. Come on, what can I do to improve my gaming experience? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the mod section of this video, and they're marvellous. Now game modding is absolutely nothing new, it's been around for years, but that doesn't stop it being one of the most popular reasons that people actually get into PC gaming in the first place, and it can be done on such a large number of games, but there are two main methods of doing it. The first, and by far the most simple, is to use a game with Steam Workshop support, as these are tried and tested mods that you can turn on and off with just a few clicks. XCOM Chimera Squad and Civilization VI, for instance, both have very simple mods, they can use for things like increased characters, maybe game behavior changes, tweaking the mechanics, graphic reskins, all of this good stuff. But if you do want to go a little bit more down the advanced route and completely change the game behavior, or maybe play a game with mods that doesn't have native support, then you're gonna need to do this by downloading them from websites like Nexus Mods, for instance. And these can do all sorts of wacky and crazy things. There's a small little game out there called Skyrim that actually has about two billion mod downloads from Nexus mods alone. That in itself is crazy. I'd actually be a little bit lame here and say that it makes me proud to be a PC gamer and representing and flying the PC Master Race flag when you see what people can do um, in their spare time with game mods. It's absolutely incredible. So whether it's performance increases, making your PC quieter, making it louder and overclocking it and getting the most out of it, or just, I don't know, turning uh, your GTA character into Thomas the Tank Engine or something, it's all available on the PC gaming platform. If you have enjoyed this video, then please hit that like button. I'm serious, don't go anywhere. Hit that like button, because it really helps me out a lot. I, I, I promise. If you do want to check out any of this setup gear, that's all linked down in the uh, description below. And of course, while you're down there, don't forget to check out the ASUS ROG Theta. 
This incredible headset offers true 7.1 surround sound in a cozy and comfortable package. Eight individual drivers give you the surround sound that you've been dreaming of. And thanks to the epic AI noise cancelling microphone, you can record and communicate with confidence. Get ahead of the game today with the RG Theta, grab yours with the link located down below. Something that'll be very useful to you is maybe part one of this video where we go through some very easy tips and tricks that don't require any overclocking at all. You can find that linked in the end screen and down in the description. Do get subscribed for more videos like this. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.